Good afternoon, everyone. This is Peter. Um, I'm Ellie Ray. I'm the assistant director. And I want to thank you all so much for coming and supporting us and watching Black Comedy. Just a few little reminders. Please refrain from smoking. No flash photography and silence your phones. There's a lot going on on stage and you won't want to miss anything. So also, Celebration of the Arts is April 27th and 28th and you won't want to miss that. And front row, I'm very sorry, but you're all in our splash zone, so <laughs> enjoy the show. They're, they worked really hard, and I hope you can all enjoy it. <laughs> He's absolutely mad about his antiques. What do you think he'll say if he goes into his room and finds that we've stolen them? Don't dramatize. We haven't stolen all his furniture, just two chairs, the table, the sofa, the lamp, the bowl, and the vase of flowers. That's all. And the Buddha. That's more valuable than anything. Oh, do stop worrying, darling. You don't know Harold. He won't even let anyone touch his antiques. Look, we'll put everything back as soon as Mr. Bamberger leaves. Now stop being dreary. Well, frankly, I don't think we should have done it anyway. Harold or no? Why not? For heaven's sake, the room looks divine now. Just look at it! Darling, George Bamberger's a multi-millionaire. He's lived his life among this sort of furniture. Our few stolen bits aren't going to impress him. If you ask me, it'll look much better if he finds me as I really am. A poor artist. It might have just worked. It might, but it certainly won't impress Mom. Remember, she's coming too. Oh, how could I forget why you had to invite your monster mother? I can't think. Oh, <laughs> not again. It's too damn much. If she's going to be convinced that I'm a fit husband by watching a famous collector buy some of my work, then she doesn't deserve to have me as a son-in-law. She just wants some proof you can earn your own living. And what if Bamberger doesn't like my work? He will, darling. Just stop worrying. I can't. Get me a whiskey? Uh. <laughs> I have a foreboding. This whole thing is going to be a disaster. An A1 gold-plated 24 karat disaster. The trouble with you is you're what Mama calls a DD. A determined defeatist. The more I hear about your mama, the more I hate her. I loathe the military, and in any case, she's bound to hate me. Look, all you gotta do is stand up to her. Mama's only a bully when she thinks people are afraid of her. Well, I am. You haven't even met her. <laughs> that doesn't even matter. I'm a complete physical coward. She'll smell it on my breath. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Here. Thank you. What can she do to you? Well, for one thing, she can refuse to let me marry you. <laughs> Aww, that's sweetie! <laughs> I like you, Uncle. It goes with your hair. Straighten your tie. You look sloppy, Boo. Well, you look divine. Really? I mean it. I've never seen you look so lovely. Tell me, Frank. Have there been many before me? Thousands. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? None. Well, what about that girl in the photo? Oh, she lasted about three months. When? Two years ago. What was her name? Her name was Clea. What was she like? She was a painter. Very honest. Very clever. And just about as cozy as a steel razor blade. When was the last time you saw her? I told you. Two years ago. Well, why do you still have her photograph in your bedroom drawer? I just do. Give me a kiss. No one in the world kisses like you. Tell me, when. Did you like it better with her or me? What? Sexy poo. Oh, people will be here any minute to put on a record. Preferably something for your mother. What is she like? She doesn't like anything except military marches. I should have guessed. I might have something. Try the last record on the shelf. Uh, the orange cover. It should be called Marching and Murdering with Susa or something. Oh, this one? That's it. 
The band of the cold stream guards. Oh. <laughs> Ideal. Put it on. So how do you switch it? Just turn the center knob and be sure to plug it in. What a spray. Oh God, let this evening go all right. Let Mr. Bamberger like my work and buy some. Let Harold's monster mother like me. And let my neighbor Harold Gorge never find out that we borrowed some of his precious furniture behind his back. Amen. Oh shit, we've blown a fuse. The record player must have done it. We need another fuse. Oh, well, where's the box? It's upstairs. Uh, have you many candles? I don't think so. Uh, what about matches? Um, try the drinks cart. No, 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 try the record player. Oh, oh, there's nothing here. Oh, damn, damn. Won't you believe it? I'm coming, I'm coming. Hello? Hello? No, 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 I'm fine, I'm just fine. You? Carol, darling, would you check the bedroom, will you? Oh, I haven't finished in here yet. Well, I just remember there might be some fuses in the bedroom. In that drawer we found the photograph. Go uh, and get one, will you? But, but I don't think there are, I didn't see anything in there. Don't argue, just look. All right, keep your hair to yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry, you must have missed them. I'm sure there are some there. Uh, but, but what about the matches? We'll just have to mend it in the dark, that is all. Oh. Please hurry, darling. Oh, God, how dreary! Oh. Hello? Well, well, well. <laughs> no, <it is. laughs> Good. That's fine. Fine, fine, fine. Stop saying what? Carol, the darling. Clea, what, what are you doing here? I thought you were in Finland. It's hardly been six weeks. Where are you speaking from? Port Authority! <laughs> That's a terrible idea. I am absolutely busy tonight. And I'm afraid I can't get out of it. It's business. Brynn, there's nothing here except your dreary socks. Haven't we any matches at all? Try the other drawers. Look, Clea, I can't talk tonight. Can I call you tomorrow? Where will you be? No, I'm not tonight. I told you that already. I know I'm just around the corner. That's not the point. You can't come around. The situation's changed. Something's happened this past month. Oh, Bryn, I can't see anything. Please? Look, Clea. I can't discuss it over the phone. Has it got to do with what? Of course it has. I mean, you can't expect things to stay frozen, can you? Bryn, I can't find anything in this. Haven't we any matches at all? Stop wailing, will you? No, not you. I'll call you tomorrow. Goodbye. Oh, oh Bryn, who was that? No, it's just a friend. Did you find those matches? I can't find anything in this. We've got to get some matches. I'll try the bodega then. I'm afraid not. 
so impertinent of me. I am absolutely terrified of the dark. <laughs> Darling, this is Miss Furnival from upstairs. Uh, Miss Furnival, Miss Malkins. Oh, how do you do? Oh, oh, oh. Perhaps we should put Mr. Bamberger off then. Oh, but didn't you say he's dining out and then coming here after? Yes. Oh, so he can't be reached. Damn it. Hello? Operator, yes, I'd like to, um, I'd like the New York Electricity Board, please, the night service. Uh, I'm sure it's in the book, but I'm afraid I can't see. Uh, no need to apologize, no. I, I'm not blind. No, I just can't see. You see, we've blown a fuse. No, we haven't got any matches. New York is employed with idiots. What? You're so right, Mr. Miller. <laughs> Miss, please, I don't want the number. I can't dial it. Have you tried dialing in the dark? Miss, please, I just want to be connected. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> By any chance, you wouldn't happen to have any candles, would you? <laughs> I'm afraid not, Mr. Miller. Hello? Yes, I'd like to report a main fuse. 7085 West End Avenue. My name is Miller. Yes, all right. Just hold on. Hold on. If I might suggest, a Harold Gorins that lives opposite, sorry, dear, um, he might have some candles. He's away for the weekend. But always leaves the key under the map. That's a great idea. That's just the type of practical thing you would have. I'll go and see. Oh. <laughs> oh. Mr. Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now, Mr. Miller, oh. hurry up. Mr. Miller. Stop it. 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 Stop I knew it! I knew it! This is going to be the worst night of my life. Hello? Hello? Ah! This <laughs> won't have to happen tonight. <laughs> it's just princely luck. Oh. Is there something special tonight, then, Miss Melkin? It couldn't be more special if it tried. Oh, my! May I ask why? Have you heard of a German called George Bamberger? Yes, indeed. Isn't he the richest man in the world? Yes, and <laughs> he's coming here tonight. Tonight? In about 20 oh. minutes to be exact. And to make matters worse, he's apparently stone dead. How extraordinary. <laughs> May I ask why he's coming? Oh, he saw some photographs of Brinsley's work and got mad at me. About He's a great collector. Bring would be absolutely made a favor of one piece of his. How exciting. <laughs> it's his big break. Well, what was until a moment ago? Oh? <laughs> My dear, we must get some help. Um, jiggle the thing. <laughs> Hello? 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 <laughs> Is it working? Perhaps a bomb's fallen and everyone's dead. Oh! Please don't say things like that. <laughs> oh, even in levity. Hello? Oh, hello. Oh, this is number 7085 West End Avenue. I'm afraid we've had the most dreary fuse. Oh, it's what's laughingly known as a master boss. Oh. Well, we want a little man. Well, they, they, they can't all have the flu. Oh, please try. It's screamingly urgent. Thank you. Sometime this evening, they hope. That's a lot of help. Oh, they're not here to help, my dear. In my day, you paid for service and you got satisfaction. Nowadays, you get some foreigner swearing at you. And if they think you're of the middle class, oh, it only makes it worse. <laughs> Would you like a drink? I don't, thank you. My father being a Baptist minister strongly disapproved of alcohol. <laughs> Damn it, Bless! Is there anyone there? Oh, in here, Mommy Poo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
taking refuge, I'm afraid. I'm not very good in the dark. <laughs> well, when did this happen? Oh, five minutes ago, the main thing, he just went. And where's this young man of yours? Oh, he's in the apartment opposite. He's trying to find some candles. <laughs> oh, you mean he hasn't got any? Oh, no, he can't even find the matches. I see. <laughs> N-O! No organization! Bad sign! Mama, please, this could happen to any of us! Oh, hold you. Well, not to be. What the hell is that? Oh, look, it's Selma Grinsley's work. Is it by Jove? And how much would that cost? Um, I think he's asking 500 for it. <laughs> <laughs> my God! Well, uh, do you like the apartment, Mom? I mean, he's furnished it very well, hasn't he? I mean, it's rich, but it's not gaudy poo. Uh, very elegant. Good, I can see he's got proper taste. Now you see, that's what I understand by a real work. Well, you can see what it's meant to be. <laughs> oh, good heavens. What is it? Well, nothing. It's just that Buddha so closely resembles the one Harold Gorich has. It must have cost a pretty penny, huh? He must be quite well off. By Jove, it's got pretty colors. <laughs> Miss Furnival, do you know Mr. Gorich? Oh, very well indeed. We are excellent friends. He has such lovely things. <laughs> oh! What? Well, this furniture, surely. Oh, goodness. Mama, why don't you oh. get in here? It's Bryn's studio. There's something I particularly want you to see before he gets back. Oh, very well, Duffing. Anything to oblige. Excuse me. <laughs> Miss Furnival, you're a sport, aren't you? I don't know. What is this furniture doing here? It belongs to Harold Gorich. I know. We've done something absolutely frightful. We've stolen all his best pieces and put Bryn's hoard on bits in his room. But why? It is disgraceful. Because Bryn's has got nothing, Miss Furnival, nothing at all. He's as poor as a church mouse. If Mom had seen this place as it looked normally, she'd forbid the marriage on the spot. <coughs> Mr. Gorringe wasn't there to ask, so we just took the chance. If Harold Gorringe knew anyone had touched his furniture or his porcelain, he would go out of his mind. And as for that, who knows? <laughs> it is the most precious piece he owns. It is worth thousands of dollars. Please, Miss Furnival, you won't give us away, will you? It, it's only for an hour, and we're desperate. Hmm. <laughs> Very well. I won't betray you. Thank you. But it'll have to go back, exactly as it was, just as soon as Mr. Bamberger and your mother leave. Oh, Miss Furnival, you are an angel! Do you have a drink? Oh, well, you don't, but have a bit of lemon. Thank you. That oh. I won't refuse. And that's supposed to be a sculpture. Well, it's not supposed to be. It is. Well, they make good garden implements. I'd like to return to the soil. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very funny, Mama. Oh, well, sorry, Dumpling. Speak as you thought. Well, I wish you wouldn't call me Dumpling. Well, <clears throat> There's no point wasting this, we may need it. No! <laughs> oh, Miss Furnival, don't worry. Oh, in a few minutes, Bryn will be back with candles, okay? Very well, then. I guess I'll go. I don't want to be in your way. Oh, you're not at all. Don't worry. Oh! Oh, Bryn? Hello? Oh, did you find anything? You can't find anything in this. If there are candles in there, I don't know where they are. Did you get a hold of the electrical people? Oh, well, they said they might send somebody around later. How much later? They don't know. That's just perfect. What a look at. Not a goddamn panel in this house. <laughs> a deaf millionaire show a sculpture to, and your monster mother to keep happy with this thing. Woo! Good evening. <laughs> Bryn, this is my mother, Colonel Melton. Good, good evening, ma'am. Uh, funny you being there all the time. 
Uh, I'm just expecting uh, some monsters, uh, neighbors, uh, neighbor monsters. Uh, you know, they rang up and said they might come round. Well, well, well. You seem to be in a spot of trouble. <laughs> no. Just abuse. Nothing, really. We get them all the time. Uh, this won't be the first fuse I've survived, and dare say it won't be the last. Well, in the meantime, you've got no matches, right? Right. No candles, right? Right. No B E, right? B E. <laughs> Basic efficiency. I, I wouldn't say that exactly. By that, I mean the simple state of being at attention in life. Hey, hey, at attention. Sorry. Rather than at ease. I'm certainly not at ease. So what are you going to do about it? Do? Don't echo me, sir. I don't like it. Don't? You don't like it? Sorry. Now look you here. This is an emergency and anyone can see that! No one can see! That's the emergency! Spare me your humor, if you don't mind, sir. Let's look at the situation objectively, right? Right. Problem. <laughs> Darkness. Solution. Light. <laughs> <laughs> All right, weapons, matches, candles, torches, anything else? An Iron Maiden. What did you say? Nothing. Uh, candles, matches, torches, very common. And where might you find any or all of these things at this time of night? I have the faintest idea, man. The bodega, of course. You have a bodega close by, haven't you? Uh, of course. Uh, I spend all of my time there. Very little of my time, actually. Not much time at all. Ten minutes a day at most. Well, it won't be closed yet if you hurry. Very good, man. You're clearly of mind to save the day. Well, get on with it, man! Yes, ma'am. Back in a minute. Oh, good luck, darling. Thank you, my son. Oh! Stop that at once. <laughs> Hello! Hello! Anyone there? Harold! Grinsley! Oh, Jesus! Oh! It's Harold! Harold. Grizzly. Come in here, Harold. We've blown a fuse. It's dark all over the house. Have you phoned the electric people? Yes, come in. Oh, it's rather cozy in the dark, isn't it? Yes, I suppose it is. So you're back from your weekend, then? I certainly am, dear. Weekend. Some weekend. I couldn't take it anymore. It rained the whole damn time. I feel dead to my panties. Have a drink. Tell us all about it, then. Us? Who's here, then? I am Mr. Orange. Fine. Taking refuge, I'm afraid. Oh, you know how I hate the dark. Oh, the last thing is beginning to go. Ah, oh, there we are. Who are you? <laughs> May I present Harold Gorange, my neighbor, uh, Colonel Melkins. How do you? How do you do? And this is Carol Melkins, Harold Orange. Hello. Uh, let me take your cape, Harold. Be careful, it's sopping wet. Well, you've got no candles, I suppose. <laughs> Would you believe it, Carol? But I haven't. Silly me. Oh. Well, what the devil did you do that for? <laughs> I'm saving your wick, Colonel. You may need it, and it's failing fast. It's all right. I've got some matches. Matches? <laughs> Here we are. I hope I've got the right end. Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> what was that? A draft. No man can sail in this room. It is impossible. It's the cross currents. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh. Oh, what's up with you? Nothing. Have you got a dead body in here? Oh, of course not. <laughs> it's just, it's dangerous. It's, it's deeply dangerous. We could all die in this oh. very room, actually. Die? Yes, it's something they always warn you about in old houses. It's the master fuse box and the gas supply are close together. They're up there. So what about it? Well, <laughs> electrical blowouts can damage the gas supply. They're famous for it. They do it all the time. And they say to avoid all naked flames till they're mended. Mm, I never heard of that. <laughs> Oh, it is fantastically dangerous and absolutely true, isn't it, Carol? Oh, yes. In fact, they warned me about
about it this evening on the phone when I called them. Oh, they said do not strike a match until the fuse oh, is mended. It's dreadfully, dreadfully dangerous. Oh, you can't oh, even imagine oh, oh, how oh, dreadfully. There you oh. go. Well, then why oh. didn't you warn me about it before, darling? Oh, I, I forgot. Brilliant! Oh, <laughs> oh goodness. We must stop. Dry off. 
a chin line can do wonders for you. I won't be a minute. Goodbye. Oh. Oh, 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 well, now, Trace, um, it's Jeanette for Mr. Borange, and I suppose Winnie for Mama, and I'll have a nice glass of beer and tonic. And how on earth are you going to do all that in the dark? Oh, I know the exact way I put the bottles. It's very simple. Oh, look, love, let me strike a match. I'm sure it's not that dangerous <laughs> just for oh, a minute. Sorry. Oh, oh, Mr. Borch, do you want to blow us all up? All Mr. Bamberg will see is teeny weeny bits and pieces of us. Very messy poo. Bamberg, is that who's coming? George Bamberg? Yes, oh. to see Mr. Miller work. Isn't it exciting? Of course, money! Well, I never. I read an article about him last week in the Sunday paper. He's known as the mystery millionaire. He's almost completely deaf, deaf as a pulse, and spends most of his time indoors along with his collection. He hardly ever goes out, except to a gallery or a private studio. Oh, that's the life. If I had money, that's what I'd do. Just collect all the china and porcelain I wanted. Oh, I've never met a millionaire. I've always wondered if they feel different than us, like their actual skin. Their skins? Yes. <laughs> I've always imagined them to be softer than ours. Like the skins of ladies when I was a girl. Oh, what an interesting idea. Oh, she's real fanciful as Bernie. Real imagination. I always say she could have been a writer. Oh, Mr. <laughs> <Bernie. laughs> You're always so generous with your compliments. But this is by no means fancy. In my day, soft skin <laughs> was quite a sign of refined. <laughs> right. Nowadays, it's hard enough for us middle class to keep ourselves decently clothed, let alone soft. You never spoke a true word, Fernie. It's all going to the dogs everywhere you look. Take that word you just used. Ah, that doesn't mean anything anymore. People used it once to indicate something gracious, something elegant in the old world. Not anymore. <laughs> if you were to say what to most people, they think you want to do something with sugar. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, dear. You and I are never going to hear that word spoken properly again in our lifetime. Because no one gives a damn anymore. They haven't got a clue and they don't give a damn. And you and I have simply got to get used to it. <laughs> My father always used to say that. Before the fire came and burned down our home in Springfield. Oh. <laughs> the game is up, my girl. We middle class are as dead as the dodo. Oh, how right he was. Your father was a professional man? He was a man of God. <laughs> oh, how are those drinks coming, Dudley? <laughs> oh, come on, Mama, we'll just be one minute. Oh, let me help you. Uh, uh, well, you can take this bitter lemon to Miss Furnival if you want. Very well. Oh, oh. <laughs> a bitter lemon for Miss Furnival. Right, you are. So, your father was a minister then? He was oh. a saint. <laughs> Anyway, she's gotten a hand to vase I sold her last week, 
It was a birthday present for an old geezer she's having a bit of a ding-dong with somewhere in Earl's court. I'm hoping to collect all his loot when he dies as I read the situation. I'm a pretty good judge of character, Fernie, as you know. And she's a real grasper if I ever saw Oh, oh no! Oh! Oh, 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 you want to watch that the prettiest roach in this mission. I've told her about it several times. Anyway, this vase, it's a nice bit of canned sea porcelain. Blue and white. Absolutely authentic. I let her have it for $60, and she got infinitely the best of the bargain. No arguments about that. Well, and she prances. Her hair all done up in one of those bouffant hairdos, you know, tart, French like. It would have looked fancy on a girl half her age and twice her looks. Oh! Exactly. You know the song? <laughs> and do you know what she says to me? Mr. Goring. She, she says, I've been cheated. <gasps> no. I took this vase over to Bill Everett in the Portobello Market. He says it's not what you called it at all. Chinese and very rare. He says it's a piece of 20th century trash from Taiwan. Ugh, <gasps> oh, does he? <laughs> I say, does he? I keep calm. I always do when I ride. Yes, she <laughs> says. He does. And I thank you to give me my money back. Oh, how dreadful, Mr. Gordon. <laughs> what did you do? I counted to ten and then I let her hat. I said, I don't expect my customers to go check it up on my honesty behind my back. In the second, Bill Everett is as ignorant as Barnes with dirt. He doesn't know Ming from Ping. And in the third place, that applies to you too, Mrs. Levitt. Don't you ever cross my threshold. Because if you do, I will make myself responsible for the consequences. Ah! Mr. Gorich, here is your gin and lime. You deserve oh. it. That was proper blazing. No. I didn't care. Oh, Mama, Mama, where are you? Here, Dumpling. Kiss you, old bitch. Tell me about the closet. Oh, do you care for porcelain yourself, Colonel? Oh, I'm afraid I don't know very much about it, madam. I like some of that Chinese stuff. You get some lovely colors. Oh, like on that statue I saw when I came in here earlier. What statue is that, Colonel? Uh, well, the one of the packing case, sir. Very fine. I didn't know Brim possessed any Chinese stuff. What's up with then, this statue? Oh, oh, well, now that we all have drinks, uh, I propose Mama's regimental toast. Everyone raise your glasses. Come on, get up. Oh, oh! To the 25th horse and confusion to its enemies. Oh, I'll drink to that. Confusion. <laughs> of the old 25th. Thank you, Dumpling. Very touching, very touching indeed. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Damn it, that's true! I've got the bitter lemon. Oh, oh, how horrible that would be. It's alcohol. How unpleasant. Here, love. <laughs> you get the bitter lemon, but I get the gin. Colonel? Oh, here, sir, scotch for me. Here, Colonel. <laughs> well, let's try again. Bottoms up. Quiet. Well, 
what's your answer? You're absolutely right. That's a very, very good conclusion to come to. Not everyone would have guessed that. I have been very patient with you tonight, young man. But enough is enough. It's P.E. now. Patience exhausted. And if you think I'm going to let my daughter marry a born liar, you are very much mistaken. Mama, why don't we let me handle this? What is it a handle, man, for heaven's sake? Mary? Oh, did she say Mary? Yeah, well, that's the general idea. You and this young lady agree. Are what's laughingly known as engaged, oh, subject, of course, to Mama's approval. Mm, well, I never. What a surprise. We're keeping it a secret, Harold. Evidently. How long has it been going on then? Uh, two months. You sly cat. I hope you approve, Harold. You sly secretive cat. <laughs> you certainly know how to keep things to yourself, don't you? I was going to tell you. You were the one person I was going to tell. But you didn't. I never got around to it. You chose to keep it from me? I did not choose, I just forgot. Say no more. There's no obligation to share confidences. I've only been your neighbor for three years, and I've always assumed there was more of a geographic closeness between us, but I was obviously mistaken. Please don't start getting huffy with me. I'm friends. not getting anything. It'll just teach me not to bank on so-called friendship. It's silly me again. Silly, stupid, trust Oh, my God. Oh, man. Come on, Mr. Orange. We haven't told anyone, really. Not one single soul. Well, at the moment, I think there is nothing to tell, and I'm not sure there's going to be. What? I'm afraid we've gotten off on the wrong foot, Colonel. Oh. And if it's my fault, I apologize. Well, it is. My father always used to say, to err is human, to forgive is divine. Well, he's absolutely right. But I thought that was somebody else. Oh. So many people copied him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Miss Furnival, can I help you with something? No, dear, thank you. I'm just helping myself to another bitter lemon. <laughs> oh, that is, if I may, Mr. Miller. Of course, help yourself. Oh, thank you. Most kind. Well, sir, wherever you are. Ooh. I am here, Colonel. Well, I will overlook your death to you this once. But understand this, Miller. My daughter is very dear to me. Show me you can look after her, and I'll consider this whole thing favorably. I can't say fairer than that, can I? Most fair, ma'am, most fair indeed. <laughs> oh, Mama, of course he can look after me. Oh, in five years, his works will be world famous. Oh, I'll feel just like a Mrs. Michelangelo. There wasn't a Mrs. Michelangelo. Oh, oh, wasn't there? No, he had passionate feelings for a rather different nature. Oh, Mr. Porridge, <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, Carol, if I hurt your feelings, I apologize. Can we all just be friends? I'm not sure that I can contemplate a friendly relationship with a viper. Two years ago. Oh, 
Well, now since you mention it, I remember her perfectly. I mean, she's not one you can easily forget. Was she pretty? No, not at all. In fact, I'd say the opposite. Actually, she was rather plain. She was not. I'm just giving my opinion. You haven't given it before. I was never asked, but since it's come up, I always thought she was ugly. For one thing, she had teeth like a picket fence, yellow and spiky. And for another, she had bad skin. She had nothing of the color I ain't thought. No, oh, she did. I remember it. It was like a big pink wallpaper with an old brain from the paper underneath. This is disgraceful. You knew I never liked her friends. Liz, she was too clever by half. And so tiresomely bohemian. No, you think she was as pretentious as her name? I bet she was. That photograph I found showed her in a sort of sultry peasant blouse. She looked like she was picking potatoes in Idaho. <laughs> oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what is the matter with you, Harold? With me? Well, it wasn't the Colonel. What was it, sir? Clea. Clea? What? Oh, I was just remembering her, ma'am. You all were talking the most awful nonsense about her. She was beautiful. And in any case, Harold, you said I was famous for my taste in women. Ah, uh, but it's had its lapses. Bullshit! She was beautiful, and tender, and caring, and kind, and loyal, and witty, and adorable in every way. You told me she was as cozy as a steel brazier blade. Did I? It didn't sound like something I would say. You, you, you told me in this room when I asked you what she was like. She was a painter, very honest. Very clever and just about as cozy as a steel razor blade. I said it so. What if I did? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, oh, with that noise and touch, I don't know the meaning of the word. Oh. But, but what's all this talk about her being kind and tender all of a sudden? She's going to talk to you, Mary. So, oh, very rare patients, I imagine. That's not so rare, not so rare. Oh, 
I'm sure you're right, Mr. Corridge. That's how I imagine them. Hands like silk, and always two hours late. <laughs> no one in the world kisses like you. I missed you so badly, when I had to see you. I thought about nothing else these past six weeks. Oh, Bryn, I made the most awful mistake walking out. Wait, well, yeah, please. I mean, we've known each other for four years. We can't just throw each other away like we're uh, finishing. Uh, I don't see why not. You know my politics, and you've heard my gossip. And you've certainly been through all of my entertainment section. Well, how about the second edition? Do we simply can't discuss this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> just trust me, just for an hour. Of course I can. You don't want me down there? No! Then I will undress and go quietly to bed. Once you've gotten rid of them all, I'm waiting. That is a terrible idea. I think it's lovely. A little happy <coughs> relaxation from <laughs> I am perfectly relaxed.
not stop. <laughs> Miss Vernival, please! Excuse me, but why are you all shouting at me? I'm not deaf! You told me he was! I read he was! My father was! <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, sir, I misunderstand. <laughs> ah, look, your outfit. And where did you get that smart little cat? <laughs> My cat? Oh, yes! Wildly original. But surely you've seen them before. We all have them. You mean it's some kind of club? <laughs> I bet it's very exclusive. Oh, yes, absolutely impossible to get into. <laughs> <laughs> My father. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he always used to say, it's easier for a rich man to go through the yeah. eye of a <laughs> that is for a camel to get a nervous. <laughs> oh Christ! The sofa. I have forgotten about the sofa. We need to get that flashlight away from him. Okay. Excuse me, sir, but I am pressed for time. Of course, of course. Got in Himmel. Is this one of yours? Yes. It's amazing. Absolutely so. fantastic, but definitely I see at once what it represents. You do? Oh, no question. The two needles of man's unrest, <laughs> self love and self hate, right. leading to the same point. Oh, you don't have to do that. Do what? <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? Why, yes, of course, sir. It's clear to see you're the expert. Ah, uh, nine and nine. Oh, may I suggest an experiment? I would love for you to feel it in the dark. This is the dark? Yes, I actually made this piece to be felt, not seen. I call it my theory of factual tactility. If it doesn't stab you to the quick, it is an art. Uh, darling, would you relieve our distinguished guest of his flashlight? Of course! That way he can try it for himself. Now, all right, stretch out your arms. Feel it all over with passion. That is the trick. Total commitment. Oh, Daddy. Shh. <laughs> ah, wunderbar. Impaled here in the dark, one can feel the the vital thrust of the argument, the anguish of our times. It has been moral force, Mr. Miller. I feel, sir, the passionate embrace of similarities to create uh, an orgasm of opposites. Oh, how super! Oh, you must charge immense sums for work like this, Mr. Miller. This one, for example, how much is this? Five thousand dollars. What? <laughs> oh, so, well. Would you like it then? <laughs> Very much. For five thousand dollars? Yes, certainly, if I had it. You mean you've gone broke? Uh, no. No, I mean I never had it. What? Hey, listen, I know millionaires are supposed to be eccentric no, or what? Uh, millionaires? But who do you think I am? Oh, well, damn it, man, you must know who you are! <laughs> Mr. Bamberger, is this some kind of joke you like to play? Excuse me, that is not my name. Oh. It isn't? No. No, my name is Schuponzig. <laughs> Schupon what? Franz Emanuel Schuponzig, born in Hamburg, 1955, student of philosophy at Heidelberg, 1972, refugee to this country in 1994, regular employment ever since with the New York City Electricity Board. Oh, electricity! Da, that's a me! Oh. <laughs> A public servant pretending to be deaf and receive 
the lower classes think they can do exactly as they want. That's exactly <laughs> right. Miller, will you kindly show this fellow his work? Why don't you just go into the attic? All right. So that is that guy doing? Come on, up you go. Get a move on. You see the light in the bottle? Go. <laughs>
Why, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, so oh, I'm pleased for you. And for you, Miss, too. Oh, thank you. And for you, ma'am. Oh, thank you. You must be Miss Clea's mother. Clea? Oh, Miss Clea? I don't understand. Oh, well, I never. So you got him at last. Well done, Miss Clea. I never thought you would. Not after four years. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, forgive no. me, sir, if I'm speaking out of turn, but you must admit you take a long time proposing. Four years is a long time to be courting one woman. But I don't understand four years. Oh, well, yes, dear, it's been all of that been long, hasn't it? Oh, and of course, it was really just in time, isn't it? It was getting a bit prominent. You little bun in the oven. Whoa. What? <laughs> oh, Miss Henry, that's why he popped the question. Of course it's not. He's always been stuck on you. He told me so not one week ago in this room. Mrs. Bunet, he says. Mrs. Bunet, as far as I'm concerned, you can keep the rest of them. Miss Clear will always be at the top of the heap for me. <laughs> oh, I says. But what about that debutante bit, Carol, the one you're always telling me about? That colonel's daughter. Oh, uh, he says, she's just a piece of cotton candy. A couple of licks to you, mother. <laughs> did you say four years, madam? Oh, yes, colonel, four years in this room. I know that voice. It's say? clear. Clear? Clear. Well, I don't understand anything that's going on in this room. Oh, I know. It's a very odd room, isn't it? It's like a magic dark room where everything happens the wrong way round. Rain falls in doors, the daily comes at night and turns in a second from a nice maid into a nasty mistress. For God's sake, shut up! At last, one real word of protest! <laughs> oh, have you finished lying then? Have you eaten your last crumb of humble pie? Oh, you coward! You damn coward! Just because you didn't want to marry me, did you have to go and settle for Don't this what? Mary?
You've been thrashed, sir. Thrashed? You have got the mark of a father's horse whip across your seducer shoulders. Would I? You have raised your butterfly voice in a pitiful spring for mercy of a mimic!
Testament, I give you the most miraculous gift of the creation. Light! Light! Thank God, thank God. And I wouldn't thank him too soon, Grinsley, if I were you. No! Then thank me, for I shall play God in this second. <laughs> Attend all of you. God said, let there be light. And there was, you people, suddenly.